Welcome back to Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, I know it's a little early, but International Women's Day is going to be celebrated or recognized globally on Sunday, March 8th. It's a day that we celebrate women, that we understand all of the strides of progress, the battles that we've fought, the barriers that we've overcome, the challenges that are no longer in our way. And we thought we'd start our celebration very early. And to kick off our series celebrating International Women's Day, we have none other than a young carnival designer. I think she's a full brand, we can say now. And, you know, I first met Natalie Von Rose at a women's event, ironically, last year. And listening to her story, you know, when we talk about women who really do chart their own course and do it on their own terms and by their own rules and create an empire, I'm sure that she's one of those that will definitely come to the forefront. Natalie, good morning. How are you? Good morning. You? I'm fine. Now, first of all, you know, we talk about women doing it and young women shaking up the status quo. Did you ever imagine, you know, now I know you're part of the 40 under 40, you're being featured in all of these women magazines, people recognize you now as this force in Carnival. Did you ever see that? To be honest, I didn't. I just went into it knowing that I loved it and I want to just create and just enjoy carnival but not to the extent that it's going to be something that i like i walk these streets and people are like oh this is natalie for news and i'm just like oh my god <laughs> guys it's, it's fine you your story is so interesting because you are an engineer by profession yes. fully qualified yes. working in the field yes. but you also had a creative side i always did yeah because for cxc and cape i did art really yeah and when did you decide, you went the conventional route, you had a stable, good salary, that everyone's like, you're an engineer, you're good to go. Yeah. And when did you decide, you know what, I'm gonna just leave it all and do something? There, I had reached a point where I was getting up at 4 a.m. and I felt like it was the most difficult thing to do every morning. And when you reach a point where you're not being fulfilled in an exercise every day, and you don't look forward to executing that job every day, I feel at that point, you have to reevaluate what you're doing. So unless you feel that zeal to execute something when that day is come, and when you get home, you're like, oh, I can't wait for the tomorrow, then that means that what you're doing is not for you. As much as yes, the salary was paying well, and it has a reputation to be a good job or whatever, I wasn't fulfilled like emotionally, mentally. It, and then it's mentally draining, doing something that you, know, you don't even really get to enjoy. You then decided to start being a designer because you decided yeah. to leave your your stable, good-paying job <laughs> with all of the perks and said, I'm going to follow my passion. But the thing is, I've always done carnival costumes, right. like wire bras and, and decorated panties and stuff for my friends. It was always just a close unit to win it. So it, in, in turn, for years now, I got a little practice with small exercises. And then when I had reached a point where I got the opportunity to design for a band and they loved the design and they gave me the opportunity to do production for it. I decided I have to decide. I can't do a full-time engineering job plus do production for Carnival. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just take this engineering job and put it in a back seat and test out this Carnival. You took a risk and sent your design to the band when they actually called yeah. you and said, we like it and we want you to do it. Yeah. Do you remember that day and what it felt like? Listen, it was ridiculous. I was just there like, how? Because you see, the thing is, carnival industry is very close-knit. Right. So it's not very easy to penetrate the system. You have to be literally invited in. I don't know. It's like a clique. But it's the reality of the situation. And we have a lot of young, upcoming designers. However, the industry itself is very managed. So for me, as an upcoming new designer with nothing behind me to show, or even years of being in the art realm, it's still shocking to me that I got that opportunity, and I always say, thank God for it. But I mean, I think that day I was just there, like, really? <laughs> just as a female and a young female, because you're yeah. so young, you know, your name is now a brand in Carnival. Tell yeah. me about that journey, you know, and obviously that, that journey of getting to where you are now, how difficult was it? Um, even through school, I always used to, I always remember, and I think it could be the system that I went to, I went to St. Augustine Girls High. And when you're amongst young women, 
that are strong, brilliant. Most of them come from um, strong homes where father and mother teach them to go along a path to execute and become strong women. You kind of literally form a line and you follow that path. So from then, from since then, I've always been trained to do well, represent yourself well. Something as simple as just ironing your shirt and having clean uniform and pulling your hair, one. These little things actually contribute to how you build yourself later on in life. And from there, I feel like that training carried on to life. And basically, I always looked at myself as an entire unit, not just Natalie Fonhoos, but legit a brand. And my schooling as well. Right. I did literature as well <laughs> and sciences. So I did a lot of things that actually helped me to understand life on a greater scale. So I used to tell myself, you know what, Louis Vuitton, Versace, these are all brands that nobody no longer, they no longer look at product. Right. It's just a brand and they pay for the name. So I always used to tell myself, and no matter what I do, it just can't be, it can't just be costume. I have to be an entire brand itself. I suppose to represent myself by physical, dress code, mannerism, execution, just personality, how you communicate with people. Did you, was it tougher for you as a young lady, kind of going to these meetings, negotiating your worth, and of you know, course. kind of you, you also your brand is ex is extended globally as well. So you yeah. you design for the, you know, kind of the first time that you started doing that was it difficult? Because they see this little like, like young girl really. Yeah. Um, to be honest. When I got the opportunity to design, and I've gotten the opportunity to design for a lot of locations, I can honestly state that this is where the brand comes in again. Sometimes people don't necessarily look at your product only. They look at you as an entire unit. So if I use social media, which is a free marketing entity, and I put forth myself as this outgoing carnivalista, I wear my costume and I, and I show enjoyment, and I just, you, 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 you keep yourself together and you show that, Brands automatically, no matter what, yes, you're designing, yes, but they also want you to wear their product. And because I've been maximizing this free social media and it's exposing me, and by extension, these brands, they automatically say, we want her. Was it all self-taught for you in terms of learning this industry and kind of understanding branding and, and kind of making to say, I'm doing it this way. I'm not going to be a worker. I'm yeah. going to own my name. Definitely reading helps a, a big, uh, like a lot. And I'd, I also say sometimes it's not just university. People go to study business and marketing and all these things, again, masters. And sometimes it's not just, you don't have to do, do formal schooling. Education is, a f is literally in 2020 free via Google. Internet Explorer, we have free books, we have our, we have our cell phones that we constantly have in our hands. It's, it's, it's not going to take much to just read up on an article to help you better yourself. What is the one lesson or the most important lesson that you learned? Um, you can never be doing anything wrong. Everything is just a learning lesson. So tomorrow, what I did today, I can always look back and I can tell myself, you know what, there are certain ways to improve what I've done and nothing I've done so far is wrong. You're it's just learning lessons. You're in a very competitive space. You I have am. a lot. And as a female, yeah. you face discrimination on that. As a young female, as a female who is in an industry that is driven with looks and yeah. you know judged in certain ways, yeah. how difficult is it for you to maneuver? And what are some of the tricks of the trade that you've learned along the way? Now, carnival is still within the beauty industry. So I think if my physical contributes to me having a comfortable space amongst my cliques and associates. So I don't feel too pressured, like, being myself. Unle I mean, you have to upkeep yourself to be considered, okay, yeah, she's good. But prior to that, in the engineering industry, when it's male-dominated, that was rough. <laughs> because as much as I would try to just keep myself looking basic, no makeup, have my hair in one, I will wear big coverall jackets, my body still shows, and men, they don't care. Yeah. They still show you disrespect, and there were there had there had to be many times I had to like say, oh, no. <laughs> and uh, eventually with time, as if you hold your if you hold your corner and you hold your own, they're gonna inevitably give you respect. You know, you look, and I saw you also went through a body transformation earlier. Yes. Uh, you and you said on one of your posts that I kind of took a little break to build my empire. Yeah. Now I'm back. Tell me a little bit about that balancing act. The reality of anything, you have to, how much of your life you give to something 
is how much you will reap. So as I always say, you can't see the sparkle of the stars with the presence of the sun. You have to leave something behind to gain something. You say maybe we don't want to see that blue sky, but we have to say goodbye to the sparkle of the, of the stars. So for me now, I felt like gym, gym could be tedious. I mean, as much as people say you get up in the morning and you go to the gym and then you feel energized for the whole day, that's not me. <laughs> I go to the gym for an hour or two and I feel like, oh gosh, for the two hours after, I'm trying to catch myself. So I felt like, why sacrifice that time when I could be working extra hours? Because my, my, my clockwork used to be, I'm going to bed like 5 a.m., 4 a.m. So it's going to be mentally and physically straining for me to now go and do this physical exercise. So I say, you know what, I'm going to have to take a back seat on at gym, I took a back seat on going out. Like there was a point in time I wasn't really even going out too. And these were little sacrifices just to help focus and just build, be comfortable in solitude for a moment. The designing process and your work ethic, you know, yeah. you, you put out these so many designs in so many carnivals. Yeah. What is a typical designing process, a day like or a week like for the people will not know? Because they see these glamorous, fun images yeah. of you on social media. but. What is it behind the camera? I mean, sometimes the design will come and hit you in one day, even if it's in one hour. But then, because I ex execute so many designs, it will be a point in time I'll just crash. Because you're gonna end up in a position where you're gonna be like, I can't mentally execute something because I'm mentally drained. And this job requires a lot of thinking and mental focus so if you're constantly putting out designs it's going to be eventually a point in time you're going to be like you're going to need some time so sometimes a design takes a day an hour and then sometimes it could take you a month so it all depends on the moments and the, on how you feel and your environment and that's it's all it, it's it's an entire process that have a lot to contribute to executing. Well, you have a lot of admiration because you are a young woman who has owned her brand. You've, no. you've really branded yourself as no. not, you've distinguished and you're a strong brand within the tribe family, basically. No. There's a lot of hate that also will come your way and a lot of envy. How do you deal with that? Um, I try to, I've always heard negative things. Um, I've heard, I've come up too quickly in the industry, I've heard, that she was an engineer before, where does she have art skills? But nobody knows prior to that. I placed fourth in the Caribbean for Cape Art. I got scholarships to Parsons University, Stad, SVA, Pratt, the top art schools. And I turned all that down to go on that acceptable Trinidadian job routine. And I feel like I reach a point now where I'm comfortable with myself. So I don't take it on. Yeah. I just let, I just mute it all out. Pro before that, I might have sit down and be like, oh, am I not getting out? <laughs> what is it? But I think that the more you start to own yourself and you accept that you can move forward in something, you start to mute all the ch 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 chatter. What do you see as your role for other young female designers coming up? Because you, you've created this mini empire, as in yeah. you, you've created a brand, branding, everything is around your, your brand. No, I mean, I try to show as much as possible via social media, especially when I'm traveling. Um, and even during the process of me building costumes, because I still feel like a lot of people want to venture into it, but it will not, only because I think parents are still trying to lead their children into a part of, which is, which is all well and fine. You want to make sure that your children are comfortable and safe. But I feel like you still could give them the opportunity to venture out. And I always try to show via social media as much as possible, just so that they can at least show, mom, look at this. <laughs> this is what is possible. And I feel like I try to be as open as possible. I think the only time I kind of hold back a bit would be if it is I'm going through a little, maybe depression or emotional stress. Because I feel like sometimes external contributing factors could actually make it worse. But the reality is, to any upcoming designer or anybody that want to venture into business, it's not all glamorous. There are going to be days when it's so difficult that you feel like your whole world is crashing and nobody else can help you other than yourself. And those days, you're just going to have to sleep it off. How do you deal with all of the attention? And, you know, because women are judged a lot. You have a lot more scrutiny than men do. I mean, you, you, you see a male designer, you see a man just succeeding. It's like, okay, yeah. good. But with you, it is a lot of what you do, how you do it, how yeah. quickly you do it, how you look doing it. Yeah. Um, 
because it's such a big transition from engineering. Engineering, yes. Because like when I go when I went to work, I mean I'm in my office. I go outside, I examine, and I'm back in my office, and I'm not really interacting much. But from that transition to now being a public figure and having to interact so often, I think it started to eat at me at the beginning. <laughs> Till I think even still now, it still messes with my anxiety. So now I suffer with a little bit of anxiety, might be some depression, and um, and this is not, a, a lot of people don't know this. Because getting that attention, that you, you, you go to the grocery and, and you just see about two people stand up there and chatter, chatter and you hear funerals and you're like, what? What is it? <laughs> yeah. So it, it messes with you a bit. So now I feel like I can't leave home anyhow, because <laughs> you just never know. And um, it's pressuring. It's definitely a pressure. How do you deal with that pressure? Who's your support system? Where do you get I that? I have my friends. Um, so I have Melkisha and David. I constantly speak to them. Um, if something is bothering me, I seek their interests, and I seek to get guidance from them only because I feel like because I have friends that are in the same industry and have more years ahead of me, they have probably experienced what I'm now experiencing long before and could probably say not really well. This is what you have to do. This is not what you have to do. And just ignore, move forward. If, it is, if it's bothering you too much, take time away off of social media, off of interacting, off of people, just to guard yourself. Because with anything, sometimes I feel like external energies messes with your balance. That decision when you took it to your family, I mean, after you were an yeah. engineer, and you said, did you just go to them and say, I'm going to leave my job and I want to do this? Well, you know what? It, it was a funny story. But my mom and my parents always had believed that I can do basically anything that I want to do. So once I finished graduated, that's fine, and I have my documents. If I choose to go, if I go choose to paint a wall outside <laughs> tomorrow, next week I can get back my job. That's just reality. Nobody can take away your education. So when it is, I went to work one time, my boss, he tried to exercise his strengths. And unfortunately, I didn't agree with what he was trying to do. I mean, sometimes people kind of, they don't understand that you can actually be putting somebody in a very sticky situation. And I think the position that he put me in could have made me lose, make my laborers lose respect for me. Right. And as a woman in the industry, the last thing that you want is your workers to have no respect no, for you. Because right. then they will just not listen to you and I'm supposed to be a superior. So I felt like once you have stripped me of that pedestal, I feel like now I don't want to work here because I feel like you make me devalue myself one. And then you started to make me feel like, am I not good enough? So, I mean, it could have been petty and small, but I feel like it was also a reason just for me to leave. So when I decided, I said, listen, I'm gonna drop my resignation tomorrow. I brought it in. He's like, Natalie, it wasn't that serious. Take a month off, take a break. I took a month off and I was like, you know what? I'm not coming back. <laughs> yeah. So my parents was fine, they were fine. They were okay. My mom was like, no, better you really just focus on this kind of because I do not even manage both. So that was a support system. I know that also the yeah. influence of the 40 under 40. What, yeah. Do, yeah, what do the young people tell you? Oh gosh, you know what? This new younger generation, I feel like um, they're now exploring different avenues to be successful in life. So a lot of them aren't talking about the conventional routine and I think 40 under 40 actually helps highlight all those job opportunities that people dismiss. So we have, an, um, we have amazing choreographs, we have amazing chefs, we have pilots, we have costume designers, fashion designers, and for the 40 under 40 gives us that opportunity to talk to the younger folks and actually encourage them, like, you know what? You can't venture into unconventional careers. You can be successful, you can do well in life, you can be successful in Trinidad as well and contribute to our economy. So I feel like that interaction alone, sometimes kids come and tell me so many strangest things. They even know who I am. I'm like, why are you on social media? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, this is also something I have to also keep in mind that my audience is grand. Yeah. And we also have, I also have younger girls and guys under 18. So I have to also be aware that some things that I can't post and there are some things that you could post and you have to just be wary. 
Your closing comments this is about you are one of the young women yeah. breaking the barriers and shaking at the status quo. Your name is now one of the names to look to for carnival designs. And your route was very unconventional. Yeah. Your closing comments to all of the young women uh, on this occasion when we talk about gender equality. Find your strength, own it, accept it, and venture into anything that possibly gives you that little tickle. And if it is that you execute and you enjoy what you're doing and you think you can make a living out of it, do it. Try it. Life is not life is life is here. It's now. So execute, try, do as much as you could do to just enjoy life. Be strong. Accept that you're a woman. Accept your strength and know that you can do it. Well, definitely we've all been inspired. Natalie, thank you so much for joining us. We've kicked off our series this morning celebrating young women. She is one of the influencers 40 under 40. She also is one of the biggest names in Carnival. She is an engineer by profession and decided in 2017, I'm going to follow my passion. And that's what she did. And now she's created a mini empire, which I'm sure will continue to grow. We take a short break. We'll come back with that more for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Don't forget to still make Let me tell you about real woman. Tell them this your song. Would you hand in the air?